Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to spring. I'm wearing a light pink shirt today to celebrate. Um, it's spring, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. I have a ton of little samples and a few bigger products. I'm gonna start off with Moroccan oil treatment. This was on my project pan list for last year, and I happened to finish this on the way back here after driving halfway across the country. So I threw out the bottle because I didn't want to carry like a glass bottle with me. This was actually the second one I had purchased. It was really effective, it's just that it has so many silicones in it and I'm trying to move towards a more silicone free natural ingredient lifestyle. Another hair product I used up that is not natural again is the L'Oreal Paris Advanced Care Total Repair 5 Restoring Conditioner with Ceramide. It's for damaged, overworked hair. Found this on sale for like $2, and I really enjoyed this. Dimethicone in my hair actually is one of those things that I'm kind of on the fence about because your hair, generally speaking, is dead already. I guess that's why I was more open to buying this product. I felt like I had to deep cleanse my hair like more often because this has silicones in it. I would definitely repurchase this. Okay, this is a Talenti Gelato jar, but um, it actually contained the last of my coconut oil. This was the Spectrum brand because when I went to Trader, I usually buy the Trader Joe's brand, but when I went to Trader Joe's, they were completely out and I was desperate, so <laughs> I bought the Spectrum brand. Um, which is a lot more expensive than the Trader Joe's brand. I just didn't like it. I've had coconut oils that I've applied to my skin as a lotion and it just took forever to dry down. This one absorbed pretty quickly, relatively quickly. But the main problem I had with this was that, you know, coconut oil has a melting point of 77 or 78 degrees Fahrenheit. That means basically when you put it in your hand, it should turn oil. That was happening, but... It was leaving behind globs of wax. So when I would spread it on my arm, like little chunks of wax would just drop to the floor. I've actually since bought an Aldi coconut oil to use on my skin. It is oilier than the Spectrum one. Um, it doesn't absorb as quickly, but I believe Aldi and Trader Joe's are owned by the same company. Um, so I really can't tell too much of a difference between the Aldi one and the Trader Joe's one. So um, I'm working on that one right now. Okay. Bath & Body Works Hand Soap in Lavender Blossom. This is the gentle foaming kind. I got this as part of a free kit when I was part of the Bath & Body Works Insiders program, which they've now discontinued. I wouldn't normally go for the gentle foaming uh, formula just because I like the gel formula better. I find foaming formulas to be more drying on my hands. I think they still have this scent. I don't know if it's called Lavender Blossom anymore. It's basically straight up lavender. But the vanilla really came out after I dried my hands and it kind of lingered on my hands afterwards. This I finished really fast. I would say in a month I finished this. Whereas when I use the gel kind, even if it's like less, this is 8.75 ounces. Even when I use one of the ones from Soft Soap ones, I think they're smaller than this. They last way longer. They last like two to three months. So personally speaking, I find that the gel ones last longer and I prefer the gel texture. Another full-size product here, it's the L'Oreal Paris Vitalift Volume Filler Serum. I did a video on this entire skincare line because I was sent the whole line to try out by um, Influencer. So I'll link that down below if you want to see the rest of the line. A lot of the products in the line really stung my face. So I handed them off to my mom and this is the only one that I kept. The serum, I like this. I don't actually see that much of a difference in my skin's hydration, but when I put this on, it looks glowier. It's hard to tell whether the glowiness is from the change of seasons or the serum, but anyway, um, I would think about buying this again. I've got two Maybelline mascaras here. This is the Maybelline Full on Self Mascara in Waterproof. I really like this. I would definitely repurchase this. It was a drier formula. The brush is pretty big and it wasn't clumping my lashes. I was able to reapply several layers of this. This helped my lashes stay soft even with it on. I just really liked it. It's a really natural look. Um, it didn't, it wasn't one of the most impressive performing mascaras ever in terms of length and fullness, but I thought it was natural and soft and dry. I really like dry formulas. Um, another Maybelline mascara I finished is the Lash Sensational Full Fan Effect, also in waterproof. Um, I was really shocked at how quickly this went bad. It doesn't smell funny. That the full the full and soft smells funny now. But the reason I could tell this was going bad was because my lashes were getting little deposits of clumpiness um, on them. 
I didn't like this mascara very much. It was really difficult for me to apply. I do have pretty short straight lashes. I did a review on this, so I'll link it down below, but the actual bristles are very different. It's um shorter on this the moon side and then longer on this side. And what you were supposed to do according to the instructions was to apply with the short side and then do a second coat with the long side. Doing a second coat with the longer side, it made my lashes droop and it didn't look as good to me. Like, it became clumpy and it didn't do anything for my lashes to apply it with the long side. So I just used it on the short side. I wouldn't repurchase it, but I know other people have had success with it. This was a product on my project pan list that took years to finish. It is a Jane Cosmetics finishing powder. I really liked it. I don't think the company really exists anymore. If it does, it's really hard to find. It did sort of cake up at the top, but once I got through that layer, it was pretty good. I'm now using the Rimmel Stay Matte, which I'm finding to be a lot um, looser. It packs a lot more on my brush when I apply it the same way that I used it on this. So I'm thinking either this was crazy old or this was a pressed powder and that one's not. On to the samples. I'll start out with this. It's the Carez Wild Rose Advanced Brightening Sleeping Facial. I actually do find that this little size lasts quite a while. I really don't have to apply very much, just less than a pea size to cover my face and my neck. It's a nice texture. I don't think it contains any silicones in it. It spreads really easily. It doesn't feel sticky, tacky, or silicone-y. And it's supposedly mostly natural. Carez is a natural brand. This was 0.68 ounces and it was part of a $24 kit with three products in it. I have a video for that as well. I will link it down below. I have a backup of this. I think it's like nearly full size because I bought a Sephora favorites pack um, that contained this. The smell is a little bit strong. It's very rose scented. When I started using this recently to finish it up, I found that this was um, stinging my skin as well, which is kind of strange because I didn't feel that way about it before. I don't know if it's because it's old and getting concentrated or my skin's more sensitive now, but that's something to keep in mind, maybe if you have sensitive skin. I don't think I would repurchase this product even though I have a backup of it just because I like the 24 hour moisturizer better and I think that one is cheaper and I kind of want to try other Carez products. Um, because this one's kind of very strongly fragranced. Another sample size is the Laura Mercier Flawless Skin Face Polish. I like this. It had a very like fine grained texture. It was almost like sandy. Um, and the smell was incredible. It smelled like the Lipton breakfast tea that I grew up drinking and I still drink from time to time. Orange pico black tea or something. It smelled like that with like cream added to it. I think it contains parabens in it. So. That is a no-no um, for me, and frankly, after I started using this, I bought the St. Ives um, green tea and pink orange scrub, and I feel like they perform very similarly to this. I think the luxury of this was the scent. I think this came in the same kit as the Laura Mercier scrub. It's the Glam Glow Power Mud Dual Cleanse Treatment. This brand is crazy expensive. I'm sure you know all about it already, but I think this would probably, if they sold this at the store, it would probably retail for like 8 bucks or like 10 bucks. This was 0.24 ounces, which I think is about one-fifth of what the actual product is. And I think it costs like 65 or $85. So do the math, or I'll do the math. I'll put it down here. It had a Garnier scent. It has that really fruity scent to it. It was a clay. It kind of stung a little bit going on, so I was like, oh, it's really working. It didn't do anything miraculous. I felt nice afterwards, but I think it was just the fact that I was like letting myself sit down for like 10 minutes and pampering my skin, but I would not buy this. This is a Marc Jacobs Relic. I got this way back in 2006 as a part of a fragrance kit for Marc Jacobs Essence. Um, that scent was my all-time scent. They've discontinued it, but this was the first like high-end perfume that I bought more than one of. It is a mirror compact, well, not really, and a solid perfume which now looks like this. I actually tried wearing this and it just smells like wax with like the smallest touch of the actual perfume and it's really discolored. But honestly, it's not that different from the classic Marc Jacobs perfume. It smells very similar, it's just that Essence was a little bit creamier. Um, so I really miss it so much. Okay, this is the Urban Decay Naked Skin 
uh, foundation weightless ultra definition liquid makeup paraben free this was awesome it came with four little um, packets like this with like two or three uses of the foundation in various um, shades and I was able actually to use three out of four shades. I had really mixed feelings on this in the winter time. My skin was dry then. It did not look good on my skin. You could see it because it was like powder on my skin. But now the weather is warmer and I'm really enjoying this. Somehow it provides like medium coverage while still blending in to look natural. It dries down pretty quickly. It has the nicest weightless almost powdery kind of texture. I have never considered buying um, a high-end foundation just because I don't really wear foundation on a regular basis, but this stuff is making me consider it and it's paraben free. But like I said, I wouldn't use it in the winter time, but spring, summer, this one might be the one to go to if you have dry skin. And if you have oily skin, I feel like this would probably be good for you year round. <laughs> this is another foundation type base. It's the Origins Smarty Plant CC Cream in SPF 20 Skin Complexion Corrector. The sample came in light to medium and medium to deep. I used the light to medium. It, like, it didn't do very much. But then uh, I decided, since, since I am getting a little bit darker, I decided to go ahead and try the medium to deep one. It was very orangey, first of all, but it blended in and then I could see all my everything underneath. I don't think it really corrects anything. I don't know if that's supposed to be the way CC creams work. I wouldn't buy it because I didn't feel like it did anything. It's just basically a tinted moisturizer. <laughs> Another thing I didn't like about this was that it smelled really, really strong. Um, it actually smells a little bit like the Marc Jacobs um, perfume, but with like citrus added to it. Uh, but it was just so, so strong. I feel like if you have sensitive skin or you're sensitive to fragrance, this would not be the product for you. And I forgot to mention, the Naked Skin also had a scent. It was more alcoholy and I think like a slight perfume scent, but it faded really quickly, whereas this one didn't. This is the Nude Perfect Cleanse in Omega Cleansing Jelly with Omega 6 and 9 Bitter Orange Annatto Seed Extract. It's beautiful without paraben, sulfate, PEG. You would apply the gel to your face and then wash it off with liquid. It was basically like a cleansing oil but in gel form. It was orange scented but I didn't think it did that much. I wouldn't probably purchase this. I don't know that it would do a good job of removing makeup. I thought it was quite gentle. Well it says it's supposed to remove makeup but I don't think it did a good job of that. This is a Kate Somerville oil-free moisturizer. This was nice and thick. I thought it was good. It was good in the winter time because my skin was dry. Um, but I, I mean, her stuff is crazy expensive. I wouldn't go out and purchase this again. That's all I have to say about that. If you have oily skin, that might be kind of uncomfortable for you. This is a Jerleek sample of the Purely Bright with Vitabrite KX. Radiance Serum. I think this smelled like roses or something or flowers and I remember not thinking this was that impressive. <laughs> I mean the sample was so small I couldn't tell whether it was brightening my skin or anything. This is the Fresh Rose Face Mask with Soothing Rose Petals, Hydrates, and Tones. I don't normally use a toner but I do need a lot of hydration during the winter months. This was it smelled so good. It was like rose jelly. If you've had Turkish Delight, the traditional kind, this is exactly what it smelled like. This was 0.13 ounces. It only took like the smallest little dollop to cover my whole face. It lasted like over seven uses. I would say even like 10 maybe? I didn't think it did anything. I didn't really feel that it hydrated my skin that much. Not more than a cream certainly would hydrate your skin. Okay, this product is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. This has lasted me a long time too, like at least seven uses. Oh, I'm so on the fence about this. This has a lot of silicones in it and alcohols, but it also has a ton of, well, lower on the list, a ton of natural stuff like aloe and camellia seed oil. It did smell like rose. It was extremely thick. It, it wasn't one of those like a little goes a long way because it was hard to spread. It was way too heavy for anything but winter time. Like I would only use this in the winter time. And two, 
It did make my skin look very glowy. I don't know what was in it because I didn't see any sparkles or anything. But once I stopped using it, like the day I stopped using it, it stopped making my skin look glowy. So I think you could achieve the effects of this cream with a highlighter. If this were cheaper, I would probably think about buying it, but I think it's like close to $100 or something. So no, absolutely not. I would only, only, only use this in the winter time. Especially if you have oily skin. I don't even know how your skin will react to this because I had dry skin in the winter time. It, it got to be too much once it started getting warmer. So those are all of my empties for the past three months. So at the end of last year, I said I was gonna vamp up the channel a little bit more. Um, I have now graduated from grad school. I have more time to do DIYs and just film videos and also to connect with you guys. So if you've been with me for a while or if you're new, say hi, tell me where you're from, tell me a little bit about yourself, what kind of videos you like to see, um, which of my videos you like the most, and if you have any requests, leave them down below and I'll try to integrate it into my schedule here. That's about it. I hope you enjoy the video. If you have any questions, let me know down below and I will see you soon. So I wouldn't repurchase the Honey Mania Line Body Butters even though I love this scent. I have a set here of shampoo and hair masks.